I'm going to show you how to use the send custom event schema element. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Watchers from Bavork. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about automating, programming, and monitoring in VMware environments, you're in the right place. Start now by subscribing and click the bell so that you don't miss a thing. Before we get started, let me be absolutely clear. You must watch the previous video for this video to make sense. So make certain you take a look in the playlist up there to see that video plus all the other videos in the series. All right, so you'll recall in the last video when we left off, what we had done was to create a workflow that had put itself to sleep waiting on a custom event. And you'll recall that the custom event is really just a string, and the string we chose was VVORK. So we currently have a workflow that's waiting for some other workflow to send that same custom event. And that's what we're going to do. So again, in the previous workflow, we used wait for a custom event. Now in this video, the workflow that we're going to create, we're going to use send custom event. Let's do that in the lab. All right, so as you can see, I'm already logged into the Vero client and I left off where we left off in the previous video. We're looking at some workflow runs and the workflow run here at the very top is a workflow called Event Waiter. That's the workflow we created in the previous video and it's a workflow that's waiting for somebody, anybody, some other workflow to send the custom event VVORK. So that's what we're gonna do, creating a new workflow. So I'm gonna go to Libraries, Workflows, we're going to create a new workflow and we'll call this one event sender. And this one, this, this workflow is the easy one. The other one is the hard one. This one's easy. We just go to the schema tab and in the schema tab, once again, we'll go down to the basic section and in the basic section, wait for custom event is the schema element that we used in the previous workflow. In this workflow, we're going to use send custom event. To use it, all we have to do is drag it into our workflow, select it, go to the inputs output section. And as you can see here, unlike the previous workflow that had three inputs and one output, all we need to set up here is a single input. The name of that input is event name. And from that, you can probably guess what this variable is about. So this input, which we're going to hook up to our workflow variable or our workflow input, this input simply specifies what custom event we want to send. Again, the custom event is really just a string and we can pick any string that we want, but it would be a real good idea here if we pick the string that the other workflow is waiting on. Now to illustrate this, I'm gonna again, create a new variable and we'll use the same name. So um, the description here is the event that we're sending, it's a custom event, and I am going to set its value, but I'm going to intentionally set the value wrong. Um, I'm going to set the value, again, this is just a string, to blah, 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 which is not the string, not the event that the other workflow is waiting on. So if I click create, I'm done with the workflow. If I had gotten the right event, um, name here, my workflow would be totally done. My workflow is done. It's just not going to work up, wake up the other workflow. But just to show you, you can send an event that no one's listening for. We'll go ahead and run this workflow and we'll save it and run it. And as you can see, it ran the workflow and nothing really happened. It did send the custom event, but since nothing was out there, no workflows were listening for that event. We basically didn't do anything. So what we're going to do here is we're going to close this workflow run. We're going to go back to our workflow. We're going to go back to that variable I just created. And instead of setting event name to blah, 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 which is the wrong event, I'm going to simply click event name. And this time I'm going to set its value correctly. So VVORK is the event name that the other workflow is waiting on. I'll click save. Just so that we can truly see what's going on, I'm going to go back to activity workflow runs in this tab. As you can see, 
we can see event waiter. Again, he's still waiting because nobody has sent the correct custom event. We also see a workflow run for event sender. He sent an event, it was just the wrong one. But watch what happens to event waiter this time when I run our new workflow with the correct event name string. I'll go to run. I'll let the workflow run. Again, sending the, the custom event is super fast. And notice if I go over very quickly over to the other tab where we can see the workflow run, currently it still says that event waiter is still running, but don't worry, this worked. You just need to remember to periodically refresh. So notice it now says that event waiter is complete, uh, or in the, the general case, you wouldn't have your workflow just stop. You would have the, the first workflow actually move on to doing something else. But our first workflow doesn't have anything exciting like that, but it does along with this new workflow, that first workflow, event waiter, and this second workflow called event sender shows you the basic mechanics of how to use custom events to coordinate the or synchronize the um, the sequencing of two or more separate workflows. What else would you like to know about Orchestrator? Let me know in the comments below.